Executive Suites with WPRI.com reporter Ted Nisi. Welcome to Executive Suite. I'm Ted Nisi, and we are talking today about one of the best known institutions in Rhode Island, the Rhode Island School of Design, much better known, I would say, as RISD. And we're talking with the new, somewhat new, new doesn't seem quite right, but relatively new, since compared to your predecessors, president of RISD, Roseanne Summerson. Roseanne, thanks for being here. Thank you. So nice to be here. So you were interim president in 2014, and then earlier this year, February, you got the job officially. I did. And congratulations Thank on you. that. But your inauguration's in October, yes. so do you, do you not have full powers yet? Do you no, have I have full powers, <laughs> but the formal ceremony will be in October. We'll, we'll invite a lot of friends and guests and the public to celebrate with us. Any fun festivities as part of that you're looking forward to? There will to? be. We're, the number of um, opportunities for the region, we're opening our museum for free for the week in honor of inauguration. We'll be having the inauguration on the Roger Williams National Memorial Park, and it will be open to the public. Um, we're also having a big block party with a lot of faculty um, art installations around the campus and um, we invite everyone to come and participate. On Saturday we have our alumni craft sale. It's actually a, a, a beyond... A, um, I've gone to that. I've yes. got ties I wear in the good. show at your alumni Excellent. sale. Excellent. <laughs> well, well, there'll be some good ones this year. <laughs> good. And this is the first time actually that the show will be juried so we're really excited about uh, sort of rebranding it and bringing in some wonderful alumni and their beautiful works of art. Is it a funny thing at all to be have a, that you are a person who's going to have an inauguration? We associate that with the presidents and, and governors <laughs> and such. I mean, when you're a younger artist, did you imagine someday I'll be inaugurated or something? I never imagined that, I will admit. But I think rituals are so important in higher education, and it really marks something historic for the college, for the region. But we're trying to make it much more of a celebration of RISD rather than just a celebration of inaugurating a president. So. That's why we're integrating it into the city, inviting the public, and really talking about the long legacy of RISD in this region. And um, I would like for people at home to give them a sense. Can you just give a thumbnail sketch of how many students are at RISD, what the faculty is, and, and how broad the programming is at this point at RISD? Sure. We have about 2,500 students in our undergraduate and graduate programs, around 150 full-time faculty, and then depending on the semester, 200 to 250 adjunct faculty a lot of staff to support those faculty. We also have, um, what was the other? Oh, pr uh, programming. Programming, okay, thank you. So we have about 21 different departments, and um, we also have a very strong liberal arts component, which is connected to all of the other departments, and, and they also have their own individual departments, but across the departments, we now have some multi-departmental concentrations, which are relatively new at RISD, and those are more thematic. We have one that's focusing on sustainability, which is a big interest of our students and faculty, and more in the works. Um, how would you describe uh, RISD's financial health? Always a big uh, concern mm -hmm. for any president, making mm -hmm. sure you pilot your institution in a healthy way. How would you Absolutely. describe its health as you, as you inherited it and as you look forward? Yeah. RISD is actually on really good ground, I'm happy to say. It's nice because I know a lot of presidents who walked into different circumstances. But even having said that, we're really looking at how we use all of our resources um, very carefully and really trying to get a new era of integrated planning to make sure that we're using every tuition dollar to its absolute best use. We instituted this year a 2.8% tuition increase, which is the lowest in recorded history. Prior to that, it, we had had a 3.9% increase, and that had been the lowest in 30 years. But we're so aware of the impact on families to send their, their kids to great schools and RISD has an expensive educational model. We have very low class sizes and lots of wonderful facilities and it's important to sustain those so we're really looking carefully about where those dollars are going to make sure that they have the, the greatest impact while keeping the cost of education as low as we can. Is it a particular concern for an arts uh, and design school where there, you know, if you, if you want to be a painter, you hopefully you become a very famous and, and wealthy painter, mm -hmm. but you might, you might not make a ton of money. Is the student debt question at all different in a school with, with uh, the amount of fine arts that you have at RISD? Mm -hmm. Well, it's an interesting uh, question because, in fact, in our alumni survey, we found that within one or two years, 98% of the students that responded had jobs and Within the breakdown of those jobs, two-thirds of them were directly connected to what they studied at RISD, and one-third were translating that education into some other kind of field or activity, which is very high for a college. And our student debt 
um, default is one of the lowest, in the lowest category in the tiers of colleges across the country. So what that tells me is, I think it's something about the kind of education we offer. We're really educating students who can be nimble, who, can, who have lots of different ways of understanding their capacity and their skills. And they're using their own creativity to develop their professional paths as much as their work. And so we have actually very high successful employment placement. We also have a wonderful career center. And in the last year, we, had a, a, we have two days. We have a fine arts day and a design day. In the last year, we had about 160 companies come on the design day, companies across the spectrum of employment, including technology firms, venture capital firms, um, firms that you wouldn't necessarily think of as recruiting from an art and design school, and then about 40-something participants in the fine arts side. So we're very actively working on engaging our students after their time at RISD. And uh, we're going to talk much more, of course, about uh, what you do at RISD, but mm -hmm. I want people to understand you a little bit better. Okay. Um, can you tell a little bit about your own background? Furn very well known for your furniture design, and you've been at RISD a long time now. I have. I was a student at RISD, graduated in the 70s, started my own practice, and did that for about 10 years and then was asked to come teach and run a graduate program in furniture design within industrial design. Because you, you actually didn't get a, there wasn't a furniture program yet when there you wasn't, went, right? Exactly. It was part, it was connected to industrial design where I studied and uh, after the nine years of full-time practice I came in as a part-time faculty member and then eventually came on full-time keeping my own design practice going for many, many years and eventually um, started the furniture design department with colleagues and um, became the department head, full-time professor, and eventually got more and more drawn into administration, and here I am. And it's uh, one of the things that's so interesting, and people might not know this, but RISD was founded, it was chartered by the General Assembly in the 1800s, mm -hmm. um, with a, a commerce focus from the start, mm -hmm. design for uh, the manufacturers of Rhode Island, exactly. along with the fine arts component, but commerce was always at the heart of it. Mm -hmm. How, but people, I think, think RISD, they think fine arts, they mm -hmm. think painting and sculpture mm -hmm. and such. When you think of Rhode Island School of Design, what do you think of when you think of design? How, mm -hmm. how broadly is that? Well, at RISD, the design disciplines are very fine arts oriented, and many of the fine arts disciplines are very design oriented. So one of the things you'll find about an art school is we're, we're boundary breakers. So uh, as, as big as the, as tight as the walls of the silo are, the students are always pushing out against them, and the faculty too. So um, the, the founders of RISD were very forward thinking. They were women, which is really interesting, before women had the vote. and. They really wanted to create something for the region that would look to innovation in its time. And at the time, this region was really the center of innovation of the Industrial Revolution. We, I often say this was the Silicon Valley of the Industrial Revolution. And those forward-thinking women imagined a school and then eventually a museum as well that could aid in advancing manufacturing, but also in the public's understanding and appreciation of works of art. And it's, I think it's really at the core of why we have such vibrancy in this region today. All right, we're going to take a break. When we come back, we're going to talk more with RISD President Roseanne Summerson about the future of the institution and how she views its role in Rhode Island. Stick with us on Executive Suite. Welcome back to Executive Suite. I'm Ted Nisi, and we're talking today with the president of the Rhode Island School of Design, RISD, Roseanne Summerson, and she will be formally inaugurated in October with a lot of uh, fun things for the public we were talking about in the first segment, mm -hmm. uh, as well as uh, though she's been doing the job now for, for many months. So, uh, Roseanne, one of the things you did, I believe, in your previous job as provost mm -hmm. uh, was you oversaw the strategic plan implementation, a big yeah. deal at, in the higher education institutions, I know, and I was reading it, and it said, uh, one quote that stuck out to me, it said, the canvas of a competitive, complex, and ever-changing world calls for reimagining the future of art and design education and the role RISD plays in shaping this future. What changes were you all thinking about who worked on that report that called for that reimagining at RISD, and how are you executing on it? Great question. Well, and one of the aspects of that is that the practice of art and design has become much more interdisciplinary. In the past, a fine artist would probably have a much more linear studio path with uh, galleries or um, various ways to sell and promote their work. Now there's the internet. Now everyone has to know how to produce video, how to do installations, how to work with cities and, and all kinds of regulations for public art. It's a much more complex kind of learning that has to happen. So we're opening up the, the porosity of some of our disciplines so that students can get a broader experience. 
And certainly in the design world, uh, everyone is recognizing that design is the answer to so many of the world's big challenges. Last night, for example, we hosted something with the State Department at RISD called the Design and Public Policy Institute. And it was the first time that we got together federal and civic and private leaders to work on a studio immersive experience, learning how human-centered design could actually have a positive impact on public policy. So these are the kind of examples of opening up the walls, thinking about how art and design can have influence beyond what is thought of as kind of the standard practices of art and design. I think one of the other um, interesting aspects is um, the role that technology plays. Technology is in every field now, and it makes a kind of connectedness and uh, all different kinds of fabrication possibilities that were really not available to artists readily in the last decade. And so there are many new opportunities, and we want to explore and celebrate those opportunities. And mentioning technology, of course, calls to mind your predecessor, John Maida, um, a, a dynamic fellow, also a controversial one at times. Um, one thing that sometimes seemed great on some members of the faculty was the focus on technology mm -hmm. from John Maida versus fine arts, potentially. Um, but you mentioned it right there, too. So do you think um, do you think he was on the right track in terms of adding, getting that focus more highlighted at RISD, or do you see that you have to kind of steer things back on course? Mm -hmm. Well, I think technology has naturally integrated into, as I said, the practice of art and design and education in general. I think that um, President might have brought some very interesting new focus areas of technology, but I think every president puts his or her own stamp on it, and I come from the background of being a practicing artist, a critical maker, as we call it, and I like the integration of technology with the notion of making. There are wonderful opportunities available now for new ways of prototyping ideas, you know, try, working with digital fabrication, working with teams of designers and artists working together in remote locations, tying them together through technology. Technology has just become a natural part of, I think, education in general, but particularly in the art and design fields. But I think it's important to understand that early kinds of tool use, the, the sorts of things that we still focus on on RISD, working with the hands, working on solving problems, they rely on tools or technology. Computer technology, digital technology is just another kind mm. of technology, but the roots of it are digital. It's mm -hmm. the hands. Yeah, I love that. Um, so, for getting into something more, especially physical buildings mm -hmm. and uh, space, mm -hmm. for people outside the school community, one of the biggest questions always is: Will there be new buildings? Will there be new mm -hmm. facilities, et cetera? Do you expect RISD to grow its its footprint in any significant way in the in the coming years? Mm -hmm. We just finished a campus master plan which provided a framework for our thinking about our physical campus for the next 5, 10, 20 years. And at, currently our plan is to stay within our own footprint. So we do have some potential places where we could think about a building if we decided to. But really we have um, a beautiful campus anchored along a riverfront right at the heart of a wonderful city. And there's, there's a lot of opportunity in the buildings that we already have. But the, the campus master plan allowed us to take on some key projects that we've already completed. So the renovation of the illustration building along the, the riverfront with a slight addition for some enhanced um, disability access as well as circulation and use of the space. We also developed 189 Canal Street, which was a building that I know many Rhode Islanders were so happy to see uh, renovated because it sat empty for a long time. And that's now the home of our apparel building. And we've also created a new space in an, ex in an existing RISD building downtown called CoWorks, which is a collaborative lab for investigating pilots around digital technology and fabrication. And we wanted that to be downtown because we wanted to have a link with the community as well as with the college. So those are examples of some projects that the campus master plan allowed us to understand how to take on within our existing framework. And obviously doing projects requires fundraising, which mm -hmm. is a big job for any mm -hmm. college president. Do yeah. you expect to launch a, a capital campaign anytime soon, a major, major push on mm -hmm. that? That's often a, a new president's first job. Absolutely. Well, we're doing a feasibility study about that right now. I do know the areas of focus from my fundraising platform, but we'll be thinking about the size and the timing of a campaign. I'm sure there will be one in the next few years. Um, there's, there are always, at any time that you're trying to uh, advance an institution, you need funding beyond what is internally in the 
sustainability model of, an, of a higher ed academic institution, so there's always a need for fundraising, but it's really important to target it towards the right opportunities and towards the right goals. So get ready, RISD alums, you're going to be hearing from the president Absolutely. on your phone before you know it. <laughs> All right, we're going to take another break. When we come back, we're going to talk more about RISD's role in Providence and some of uh, the advice she might have if you're buying furniture. Stick with us <laughs> on Executive Suite. Welcome back to Executive Suite. I'm Ted Nisi. We're talking today with RISD President Roseanne Summerson, Rhode Island School of Design. And uh, RISD, you know, the colleges are often being looked to in Rhode Island, as you know, mm -hmm. in terms of economic development, innovation, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Often the focus, I feel like, is on Brown and URI, <laughs> but RISD is right there next to Brown. Do you see RISD having a role in that, in, in helping Rhode Island figure out its economic future? Absolutely. I think there are 180 new businesses started by RISD alums in the area. and more and more of our alumni coming back to the region because of the capacity of designers and manufacturers and artists to work together. This is an area rich in art and culture and great restaurants and great spaces that are still reasonable. Uh, so it's a, it attracts desi new design and art businesses. And we play a key role, but it's not just in the region, it's also internationally. I think there was an interview with CEOs in 2010 that asked, what is the number one c competency that we need to develop in our workforce? And the answer across the board was creativity. And we certainly know how to do creativity. And I think when, when you look at the fact that there are major challenges in every industry, the kind of creativity that's cultivated at RISD and the kind of ability to actually take an idea and develop it and iterate it and critique it and then take it to an actual outcome is something that's at the core of our educational mission. So our um, alumni end up doing really interesting and important things. I think one example that people know about is Airbnb. Yeah, which this is, is going to surprise people, I think. Yeah. Airbnb, that the short-term uh, rental service is getting so much attention. Mm -hmm. They're RISD grads. They're two RISD grads that started um, by solving a problem in their own situation many, several years, not that long ago, actually, several years ago. And now they're renting more rooms than I think the top six hotel chains combined. And that's an idea of, that's an example rather, of taking a RISD education and making it live in the world. What really impresses me about what Joe and Brian have accomplished is not so much the original idea, I think a lot of people have great ideas, but that at every single moment where there's been a hurdle in terms of developing the business, they've come around it using their creative and design thinking to actually get to an even better level. And they reflect that they're able to do that because of their RISD education. So that makes us very proud. Have you ever read they were the captains of your hockey and basketball yes, teams? They I were. didn't know you had hockey oh, and basketball. Well, we have RISD. wonderful sports at RISD. <laughs> <laughs> it's yes. not my first thing I think of with you guys. Yeah, Brian was the captain of our hockey team, the Nads, and um, Joe was c captain of our basketball team, the Balls. So <laughs> Perfect. So we had. <laughs> but they actually talk about the fact that those team experiences also help them understand later how to run a big team, how to actually leverage a kind of team spirit in their own business. So again, their education, they feel really is at the heart of their success, so we're very proud of that. Speaking of teams teaming up, actually, uh, with Brown University, you practically share a campus there on mm -hmm. College Hill. And a cycling team we share. And a cycling team didn't yes. have that, and a <laughs> dual degree program That's that started right. a number of years. Mm -hmm. How is that going, and do you see more room for collaboration with Brown and RISD? Absolutely. I mean, we've had an agreement with Brown since the early 1900s about sharing classes. So. There's several hundred students each year that take classes in either institution, but the notion of formalizing a dual degree program was based on the fact that some students have a really interesting need to put together different kinds of subject areas in unique ways, and that's where innovation often comes from, when you take two things that aren't necessarily naturally aligned and align them in a new way. So we have students doing really interesting combinations of majors in each institution, and it's a very competitive program. So the students that get in and, and succeed there are remarkable. I've actually, now uh, we're able to see what a few of them are doing out in the world, and they're combining their educational concentrations from each school 
in very unique ways and extremely successful in their careers. Another interesting thing on partnerships, I know RISD is actually, you're par you've partnered with companies in recent mm -hmm. years, right, to help them solve the problems they have. Can you give mm -hmm. us any examples of those? Sure, we've worked with lots of different companies, including ESPN, um, Toshiba, Samsung, Nike, um, Now, is this they come to you and they say, we, we can't figure X out, can someone at RISD help yeah, us? often they come and they say, we'd like to work with your students to, on a particular problem, and most of the time they come in with an idea of something, a problem they'd like to have solved. But we often spend a long time with them saying, you know, that's not necessarily the problem that's going to get you where we think you could go. Let's reformulate the question. And, and I think, again, that's part of what will change the economies, what will change industries, is the notion of bringing in a different kind of critical eye that says, if you're problem solving, you probably have an outcome in mind. But if you can really think and reformulate different kinds of questions and then go on explorations that research those, you may stumble onto something that you never knew existed. And that's where innovation comes from. So that's what companies are discovering. They're gaining from working with RISD. We've also worked with federal agencies. We've worked with NASA for many years, working on a lot of design inquiries with them. And, um, companies um, that would be perhaps not expected to work with, again with the design school. Our students are working in public health spheres, with the World Economic Forum, with the Mayo Clinic, with lots of different industries applying their creativity to really looking at the big challenges that face us and coming up with alternative solutions. So I have to ask you about furniture. It's your expertise, okay. <laughs> it's what you've done for so long. When your friends call you, and I'm sure they do, and they say, I'm, okay, I have a new room, I'm getting a house. Are there any basic uh, like uh, rules of thumb you always say about, about furnishing a place in a good way, thinking about it the right way? Hire our students, hire our alumni. You know, one of the things that um, people make assumptions about how they live, and what I often say is don't just assume that you need the standards arrangement of furniture. Think about how you really live in the space and how the furniture should reflect that. It's not about imposing yourself on the furniture, but really thinking about furniture that actually aids and makes your life more pleasurable, more serviceable. And you may find that you actually design things really differently from that perspective. And I believe uh, you, uh, your furniture is an example of that now, right? Because tell us about what you did with the President's House. Well, in the President's House, I wanted to really showcase the talents of our alumni and faculty. So we've been able to fill the house with works made by faculty and alumni, and it's a wonderful opportunity to showcase RISD, to showcase the breadth of what we do and the talents that, that's there, so that when people come into the space, they, they look around and they say, oh, now I get it, now I get RISD. And that's a wonderful opportunity to firsthand allow people to experience the beautiful works of art and design that are made at RISD every day. Do you ever get to design furniture anymore? Or do you just don't have time with the president's job? Well, I have a little bit of design work going on. It's very, it's not at the same pace that it used to be, but I need to keep my hands in. Absolutely, understandably. Like, yeah. All right, well, that's thank you so much, Roseanne Somerson, for joining us my from pleasure. the Rhode Island School of Design. And thank you for joining us this week on Executive Suite. If you missed any of this episode or any other episode of the show, you can catch it all on WPRI.com, our website. You can also catch us on the radio Sunday nights at 6.30 on uh, AM 6.30. WPRO or 99.7 FM and we are now a podcast thinking about technology mm -hmm. on iTunes so you can download it every week including this episode so many many ways to keep in touch with Executive Suite and we hope you'll take advantage of all of them see you back here next week on the show thanks